So Sunday Swap went live yesterday and everyone was really excited. But for some people, when they got to the exchange, that excitement quickly turned into frustration. So maybe, instead of worrying so much about where we're at right now and how things are at this second, it'd be better if we take a step back and let's look at all the different improvements and things that are coming tomorrow. Let's take a look in the weekly report. Welcome back to Woodland Pools, your place for the latest Cardano news, tutorials, and the information you need to grow your investment with confidence. Today's time for the weekly report, so let's do a quick stake pool update and jump right in. So first, we want to start off by saying a huge thank you and welcome to all of our newest delegators. We truly appreciate your support and we're really excited to go on this journey with you. Let's keep growing together. So Sunday Swap went live yesterday. We shared this article before, but we wanted to reference it again. We know a lot of people have been asking both about when Sunday would go live, which was yesterday. But for the ISO, for those of you that want to participate in the Sunday Swap ISO, the snapshot has not happened yet. You just need to make sure to delegate to a pool that's part of the ISO before the end of this epic that we're in, which ends on Tuesday, January 25th. We'll share this article below. It has all the important dates, and it also has a link to all of the pools that are participating in the Sunday Swap ISO. But yeah, it went live yesterday. So if you come to exchange.sundayswap.finance, you can see the live Sunday Swap Dex, which is super cool to see all this liquidity tied up. But you know, aside from the excitement of the actual Dex going live, for any that tried to use it, or for any that were following along on Twitter, you probably noticed that if you actually, let's go to this order page here, you can see, well, yeah, look at that, change from nine to 10. Orders are taking a really, really long time to go through. If you put in an order right now as we're filming it, it'd take about 10 hours to get to your order to get it processed. But importantly, this is not new information, right? This is something that we talked about a couple of weeks ago in terms of expectation setting on what was going to happen on the first day that we went live. If we look at the network, here on pool.pm, we can see that, sure, that five minute and one hour load are at 93, 94%, but the 24 hour load, even before Sunday Swap went live, has been at over 90% as well, at 94%. So we have a highly congested blockchain right now. Things are going slower than maybe ideally we would like when we get sort of a steady state in the future, but things are still going. Look here, right here, we can actually see a swap going through on Sunday swap. So since there's been so much anxiety around how things have been performing just in the past 24 hours, we thought let's get the weekly report out early this week and let's take a step back and take a breath here and let's actually look at all of the other things that we have coming forward. A really good blog was put out by IOHK about a week ago about all the different ways they're planning on scaling in 2022. And let's take a look at just a high level overview of all the different things that we can expect to see that some of them are gonna be happening just in the next several weeks, some of them in the next couple of months, and some of them in the next year or so. But all of these things combined are gonna make things way better. Let's not forget that this is all part of the plan that we've known for a long time and all part of the longer term roadmap. The first era was Byron. Let's just get it up and running so that Cardano can just share ADA back and forth and value can be sent between wallets. Then came Shelly. Let's get proof of stake up and running. Let's decentralize the network and get staking working with stake pools. Then came Gogan with multi-asset, which brought us NFTs, and then the Alonzo era as part of Gogan, which brought smart contracts. And now, predictably, we are in Basho. Basho is the era of scaling. Every other step of the way, all of these different eras have progressed the way that they were expected, and we shouldn't expect any less for a predictable and planned era of scaling. From here, coming up is gonna be Voltaire and governance in the future, which we know that Catalyst is the trial ground for. But guys, let's not forget, this is the era of scaling. This is what IOHK is specifically focusing on. Most of their efforts this year are focusing specifically on the kinds of issues that we're seeing right now. So let's take a look at this article and get a better idea of all the different initiatives that are coming up that are gonna help ease some of this pain and really get us to that next level. So in this article, they go into a lot of detail about all the different elements, and we'll link the article below but we wanted to look at this high-level diagram together, the 11 ways that Cardano will scale in 2022. The first one, and we've actually already seen some of this, is block size increases. We already had one increase of 12.5% earlier this year, and they're going to continue doing these small incremental increases over time. And fundamentally, this is the easiest one to do because the bigger the block, the more transactions it can carry. If you're in a boat and you're transporting things back and forth, the easiest way to transport more things is to get a bigger boat. There are trade-offs here, but block size increases have already started and they will continue happening. Pipe Pipelining is the idea that in Cardano, a block is produced every 20 seconds. And so their goal with pipelining is, okay, how can we use that dead space that's in between the 20 seconds and start doing some preparation of things so that you don't just have like nothing, then a spike, then nothing, then a spike. How can we do things in between so we spread the work out 
and then you can get more work done without as much of a load. Input endorsers is similar, but this is more in the earlier concept phase. The idea here being that we can get improvements by allowing transactions to be separated into pre-constructed blocks. So we can see how the two of these things working together where you set things up in such a way that work can be done during those 20 second gaps and also how you can start pre-constructing chunks of things during that time as well. So these two will be working together. Pipelining will come first and then input endorsers will come after. As the amount of smart contracts goes up, they're gonna continue optimization of parameters for Plutus and how smart contracts are handled. And then for Plutus scripts specifically, these three things are all really interesting here. With the way that UTXOs work, for a Plutus script to execute, you need to actually consume one UTXO to be able to inspect it and use it, and then you create another one. And then separately, the data that's inside of that UTXO as part of the script needs to always be inside the block, as well as the actual script itself. So think about that for a second. When we look at here, for example, like these blocks that are going through, before smart contracts, the blocks were solely consisted of the assets that were going back and forth. Right now, when these smart contracts are being executed and included in a block, the entire actual script itself needs to be packaged in to each block. So think about, for example, when you visit a website, the JavaScript that's running the site that you're visiting is loaded up with the page, right? It's inside of the page itself. Currently, with the way that Plutus is running and scripts are being handled in blocks, all of that code to run the script is inside of each block, even though every one of these blocks is running the same script. So it would be much more efficient if instead of putting the full script package inside of every single block and taking up that same amount of fixed space every single time, you can do script sharing and have these blocks just have a reference to a script and they can reference that script and all you have is just a small hash to that instead of having the whole script itself. This in SIP 33 is gonna be a huge improvement in terms of how much these smart contrast scripts can do because they only need to just do the work instead of having to like package in everything all together. Node enhancements will also continue, just continued optimization. Up until now, prior to the Basho era, all focus has been on security and how do we get things right and make sure that everything is working as we expected in the most secure way possible. And if you've ever been around software development at all, there's a great way to go about it where let's get everything working and once it's working, then you look at how do you refactor and optimize. And that's exactly what they're doing. First it was security above all else, and then it's all right, now that it's secure and we know that it's provably secure, now how do we improve it? So these node enhancements will also be coming and this is gonna be something that's iterative and constantly happening. Additionally, the idea of on-disk storage, currently a lot of the work that's being done by the actual nodes inside of the different stake pools to validate transactions, a lot of the work is happening in memory. And so the idea is how do you pull some of these things that don't need to necessarily be stored up there, how do you pull them down into disk and free up some of this memory space, which gives you one, either the ability to keep the same amount of load on your memory, but do more work, or you can bring down the average cost of doing the same amount of work. And that way your minimum spec requirements actually could go down potentially. And these are all the different things that are gonna be happening on the actual Cardano blockchain itself. But then there's a whole other series of initiatives of things that'll be happening off chain that don't need to be on the layer one Cardano blockchain. Side chains are one example. So if you think about, for example, the World Mobile Project and their earth nodes, right? They don't need to run all of the work they're doing for the earth nodes on the Cardano layer one blockchain. The world mobile chain and the earth nodes doing the logic to handle these different transactions are going to be a side chain that does all their different computations and calculations. And then we'll use layer one as a settlement layer to have everything sort of finally recorded. But all of the work, the fast work needs to happen about things that are happening in flight can happen on a side chain. Side chains are gonna be a huge thing that we're going to see that are gonna allow lots of computation happening for different kinds of parallel activities that are then brought in. Hydra is a similar idea, but instead of it being side chains and doing different kinds of work that's not directly related to the Cardano blockchain's layer one interests, Hydra utilizes is what's called an isomorphic state channel, where the idea is that it's the same kind of things you do on layer one, but let's take these things now and split them up and spread them out so we can have lots of other heads doing the kind of work that we wanna handle on layer one, but let's spread out all the different places it can be done and then bring that back down. Hydra and sidechains are both in active development and we should see versions of this this year. Similar to these two things, there's gonna be the idea of completely off-chain computing and how can you handle some of the heavy computation completely off-chain. And then the really cool one in terms of light wallet support is Mithril. So Mithril, this whole like idea of like legendary light but really strong armor, the idea with Mithril is how do you get the same level of security that you have with a wallet like Daedalus, which is completely trustless and validates the entire blockchain since the beginning of time? How do you get that security in a light wallet without having to do all of that computational work? 
And the idea with Mithril is if you can kind of set checkpoints instead, think about like when you play like a video game and your different like save points that you come across. If you think about it, the game doesn't need to load up every single step and move that your character has done since the beginning of the game every time you load the game. Instead, the video game that you're playing just looks at the last save checkpoints and then just picks up from there. Obviously, it's more complex than that, but that's the basic idea of how do you get a light wallet where your light wallet, instead of them having to look at every single block, it can look at trusted checkpoints and just make sure these trusted checkpoints look good. And then from there, it can continue forward. Much more straightforward, much faster, and much less computationally intensive. And the good thing about Mithril also, by the way, for those that are having issues with Daedalus, is that if you figure out a way to do this for light wallets, like your lightest of mobile wallets, there's no reason why you can't share this back to Daedalus and have Daedalus, your PC version install, also just be much faster using these same checkpoints. And in the Cardano mid-month update, they talked about a lot of these things in greater detail as well. We'll share the link below. Things will calm down and they'll go back to our normal of what we're expecting these days of a 94, 92% load. Because keep in mind, before Sunday Swap went live, the network was working just fine. And even right now, things are still going through just fine. It's just the Sunday Swap scooping process is taking a long time. So if you don't need to interface with Sunday Swap today, just give it a second to calm down before you jump into it. And that being said, when I say that the network is still working as expected, several people have been reaching out to us with complaints that the wallets that they've been using in the past, like Daedalus, Yoroi, Adalite, have been giving them trouble interfacing with the blockchain even before Sunday Swap went live. So for that, we put out two new sets of tutorials on the wallet that we recommend that people use CC Vault. We have two tutorials now for setting up a new wallet with CC Vault, or if you want to restore from an existing Daedalus, Yoroi, or Nami wallet. CC Vault is powered under the hood by Firehose, written by Andrew Westberg, which is the same technology that runs drip drops under the hood that we saw some of those stats, how it can pack in like 30 different tokens into just one transaction. So it's a very, very graceful protocol that handles network congestion really well. And we highly recommend that while we're working through these different scaling things in the Basho era, why not use the most performant wallet that you can? I mean, we don't work for CC Vault or anything. We have no incentive, but we think it's the best one. It's the one that we've started using now, and it's the one that we're recommending for everyone to use moving forward as well. Another cool thing about CC Vault is that it natively supports multi-pool delegation. So a lot of people have been asking for that for a long time. So check out the two playlists above to get you started on CC Vault. And if nothing else, we'll see you next week.